Hello and welcome to today's video. It's quite near the end now of one of the most amazing paperback shows I've ever been to. I cannot wait to share what we've seen today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. So here we are then, and uh, this is about an hour before the doors open. And uh, the dealers are uh, quickly getting their tables organized. That was Dorset Bob there getting his uh, books out. Now, uh, someone who was uh, set up very, very early, set up and ready for business was Steve Jones. And uh, I took the opportunity before the inevitable packed crowd came in uh, to film as much of the dealer's stalls as I possibly could. Uh, well, I could have a, like a quick look through and... Uh, that's what we're seeing right now. So um, Steve had, had the uh, was selling on part of the collection of um, author Basil Copper, and a lot of these were his personal copies. Those are really nice. Those are those Hutchinson Century of books. Very very nice series. Those nice little new worlds there, and. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows Steve Jones, famous editor, writer in his own right. Now, there were a few dealers I'd not seen before at this show, which was fantastic. Some people who were doing it for the first time. And uh, that's always good because they bring along new stock. And uh, this is the first paperback show for about eight months. So... Uh, we were very much looking forward to it. This was one of those new dealers and uh, he had a really interesting mix of stuff. A lot of it in uh, like Myler bags and it was really popping. A mixture of items there on that store, paperbacks as well. And of course, one of the great facets of the paperback show is that it's uh, adjoined to the ephemera show. Now you can find all sorts of things in the ephemera show. They have dealers selling like stamps and uh, photographs and postcards. Of course, the dealers bring books along because they know there's going to be a lot of book-related fans there. And uh, I show you some of the tables just to give you a sort of a, a hint of what's available. I did have a chat with a few of the ephemera dealers and uh, they're all really, really friendly and uh, they love this sort of show. As you can see, you just don't know what you're going to find. A quite nice uh, little postcard there for the uh, moon landing. And just incredible, really. That store was uh, specialising in vintage prints. They signed stuff as well. I mean, just astonishing, really. Now, this is one of the stalls which, you know, predominantly ephemera, but they brought along a huge selection of paperbacks, as you can see. And uh, there were some nice ones there. Perhaps a little bit out of order. Um, and, you know, as I said, the dealers were still setting up at the time I was filming this. It was quite early in the day. So they still had uh, plenty of time to get this all sorted out. But um, these are just a little bit out of order, I think, um, from what I would have uh, put mine out on. But at the same time, as you can see, there's some good stuff, some collectible titles like that one. Um, not everything was expensive. And I think that's probably true of the entire fair in total. They're, they're I didn't see like many books, except on Dorset Bob's store where he had some real premium collectible pulps and paperbacks. But not many stalls had books that were like crazy money, like, you know, 30 plus um, sort of money wise. They were uh, all very reasonable. And lots of stalls had plenty of stuff cheap and cheerful. So people were coming away with armloads. So uh, from that point of view, you know, you certainly don't need to come to one of these shows with a really full wallet you can come along um with a little bit of money and still do very very well indeed uh, morris in fact uh, from zardos books had his stall full of one pound books which is brilliant but yeah lots of interesting books to go through here and uh, i think it for the ephemera fair this stall definitely had the most key books there junkie that was the reissue of course nice fleming there and there was definitely people looking for in Fleming books at the show. James Bond's always popular.
but I know you couldn't get near this store later on, so I'm glad I got in early and uh, managed to film it. I would imagine quite a bit of this sold. Nice mix of stuff there, British and American. And you could say the store's got a selection of what we would call light sleeves. Absolutely ridiculous nowadays, of course, but back in the 1950s and early 60s, I guess it was all the rage. Not such a collectible subject these days. And I don't think there's many people collecting it at all. The hot genres of vintage SF and vintage crime. Um, I think they're where there's a real explosion at the moment of people getting back into it in a big way. Science fiction and crime. But most genre fiction is uh, having a revival at the moment. I think it's just, a, you know, people looking to read. There's just such a lack of stuff being published contemporary. So uh, people are turning to the old stuff now. I just see stuff everywhere. Comics, books under the tables. So much to go through. Um. Those are quite nice. Those, are, I believe, are the American versions of some of the classics. I believe they're Penguin Stroke Putnam. And they've got those really sort of interesting, funky covers. Quite, quite nice, those. And this store generally had some really, really good stuff. The, uh, um, you see, it's all nicely bagged. That box set there of the first 10 penguins, released in 1985. It's unusual to find it without the book Sunned. And uh, that went for 45 That was selling for £45. And along here as well, he's got some nice, nice uh, books there. There's an odd albatross crime, but that was also £45, which is maybe a tad too much. A uh, little run of uh, Woodhouse Book Club hardbacks there. Bond graphic novels, but yet yeah, generally uh, a really nice table. Um, these were very good, I thought. These were five pounds each, but look at the condition of them. I mean, they must have been bought from brand new, uh, very carefully stored, really. So this is, if you're buying sort of pulps and magazines like that, that's perhaps the way you want to get them if you can, if you can find them like that. They were exceptional quality. And I said, you know, on the whole, the the books from this store were very, very nice indeed. One of my all-time favourite penguins there, the Penguin Story. Got the full catalogue at the back, so collectors love that one. Some Fleming first there, the odd Collins Agatha Christie. This was great. I was able to pick up a binder and some sleeves for my uh, a bookmarks and London Underground maps. So <laughs> I was hoping to find that store there, and that was fantastic. Really pleased to... Uh, finally get some sleeves so i'll be doing those shortly this store does like vintage prints and things like that it's fantastic and uh this chap was a viewer of the channel which is really pleased about and um he just uh, brought, brought along like his doubles and spares to clear out um so the books in this little box here were just a pound each and these bagged ones here were just two pound each which i thought was a very very good value for money so i did buy a little handful from this uh, this gentleman and we had a little chat. Big one of commandos there. There he is, Steve Morris. Nice to meet you, Steve. Very friendly chat. Now, just outside, before um, you come in, there was these three or four stalls where all the books were out at £3 a pop. And about halfway during the day, they all drop to one pound a box, a uh, book rather. So three pound and then down to a pound. So you're able to get some real good bargains there. It's a real mishmash of titles, lots of non-fiction, but there was some good stuff in there. And then once again, this is a great, great store. 
really interested in ephemera. This chapter's the antique fairs as well. Um, he brought along a few books, and I was particularly interested in this little run that he had of Fontana and Pan Agatha Christie books, which we'll see just in a moment. He had a few Penguin Crime there from the 60s. But it was these. Look, it was uh, 22 Agatha Christie's for 45 45 at uh, 48 pounds i paid 45 right as is cursory i try and walk the queue now um before the show opens it's about five ten minutes before it opens now um i don't think i'm going to be able to do this again because i kept getting stopped with people coming to say hello uh, which was fantastic um because it was such a big queue um kim the organizer um has gone through the queue and got everyone's entry money so as soon as it hits 9 30 you can just waltz straight back in which is a massive massive time saver so full marks for doing that i wish more shows would do uh, that and use their initiative in all honesty but there's kim there taking the money in advance so people can just fly in and look at the queue so we're from the door all the way through reception the hotel uh, lobby there um round the corner They're still queued up all the way down to the end of the corner. And I kid you not, round the corner again. I mean, much, much longer than last time even. So um, what a what a queue. I mean, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, here's Noel Deegan. Really, really pleased to meet Noel. She'd come a long way for the show. Great to meet her. Also, my friend Scott here. Happy for me to... Take a quick photo. Yeah. But what are you here for today, Aaron? Oh, science fiction. Yeah. Science fiction. Look at this. Yeah. You've been shopping Dorset Bob's, still, haven't you? You've yeah. got some good stuff. Yeah, I've been looking for a few things. I've got a lot of Harlan Ellison, so yeah. I'm just trying to build up my collection a little bit. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So what's your name, mate? Uh, Paul. Paul, and what have you been buying today, Paul? Uh, bought a couple of Ian Fleming books. Oh, James Bond, that's yeah. what you think, yeah? yeah? There are some around here, but you might need to hunt a bit, because they're in demand, aren't they? It's a bit competitive. It is competitive. Yeah. Oh, John. I'd to get in early. Brilliant. Well, thanks for coming along, yeah. mate, and uh, thanks for watching the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And here is the scrum. So the doors are open, and uh, I'm at Dorset Bob's stall. I'm helping him out, of course, and... Uh, I just nipped out just to sort of capture the initial frenzy that it was. And uh, at one point, Bob's store was pretty much too deep. And, uh, you know, people were, were waiting just to take a look, uh, which is, is crazy, isn't it? But that's how it was. John, yeah, John and Kenny here, two great YouTubers here in the flesh, both shopping on Dorset Bob's store. It is packed today, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. It's a superb show. So, uh, well, we'll have a look at their hauls on their channels, but I see a few uh, cheeky doors there. And, oh, you got that lovely Pan of the Furies. That's a great read. I do have a copy, but mine's very tatty. So that is a, a tough one to find with that black cover, actually, isn't it? Yeah, gorgeous. Thanks, guys. So, Steve, you're here today. You've got the t-shirt. I have. That. I have. Hang on, let me do that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so you've got the book, the t-shirt, you know. Just, I have. We just need the stage play now. We've got the full set. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got the dance. You've got the dance, yeah. So, a lot of Badger fans today. The show is absolutely packed, as you can see here. Um, and there's lots of Badger fans, so... Um, Hopefully, if you've got any spare copies, they'll be uh, they'll be snapped up. Well, I've only I've only managed to bring up fifteen copies because I've got a I've got a, a wheelie trolley. Right, right, and I've yeah. I've come up by train, uh, and I've got some copies of the Hank Jansen book. As well. Oh yeah, brilliant. So I'm bringing those up and I'm um, you know knocking them out at a little bit of a cut price. So uh, yeah, yeah, should I'm be good. Looking forward to uh, and, uh, well, and I'm looking forward to going around and having and actually having a look. Books. Yeah, well, yeah. there's there's some great stuff here to be found. That's Right, mate. What's your name? Uh, my name's Jeremy. Jeremy, uh, and you've come down today because you previously bought some books off Dorset Bob. Yeah? I have, yeah. Uh, as soon as you and uh, Steve filmed yeah. the collection, he got <laughs> in. I had got in contact. Yeah, to get down. Ended up buying about half of the box of Kona. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, there is a few left he's got here, um, and I see Steve is hurriedly looking through some stuff behind the counter. He's just rocked up, part timer that he is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah. So, are you looking for some more Conan today? Yeah. Uh, I, I never, I never ever come to any of these places with a list because inevitably you, you, you get end disappointed. Up, end yeah. up never, never, never buying anything on the list. That's anyway, true. So yeah, that is true. I, I, I'll just, so you'll see what you'll see. I'll see, what I'll see yeah. Pick up. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. 
Okay, so I'm here with Kim, the organizer of Except for Fairs. Yeah, and um, well, Kim, it's been fantastic the turnout today, yeah? Yeah, really good. Brilliant. Um, and we've got the Ephemera Fair and we've got the Paperback Fair, and yeah. the two always seem to go really well hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just how's it been? I mean, where, where are we now? It's um, it's just two o'clock. Yeah, so an so hour to go. An hour it's to still go. still really busy. It is, there's actually still a few people coming in. Yeah, so. yeah. So, would you say it's success then? A, a real success, yeah. yeah. Our, yeah. I mean, I've spoken to some of the dealers today, they seem to have had a good day, yeah, which is what it's all about. And yeah. um, the paperback show seems really successful. It's been eight months since the last one, there or thereabouts, yeah. yeah. And um, I've had loads, so many people saw the video the last one and said, Oh, I will definitely be making it to this one. So, it looks like that's actually happened, yeah. Do you think the market could sustain more than, say, even a couple of years? I don't know that more than two years because the problem is not getting the customers in the door it's the dealers getting the stock that is true yeah yeah you know okay, so even point, with yeah. the other fairs that I run a lot of dealers find it difficult to maintain really stock good. levels get fresh stock that's a really you good know, point so, yeah. um, so I don't know that more than two a year because well, where know, were they going to get the gear where from? they're going to get, get the stock, stock from yeah. um, no, no, so, so, so that's that's the issue not yeah. that there's not not um, people want to buy it but if they haven't got the stuff then they can't buy it so that's yeah I think two would be about the maximum how often do you have the ephemera fairs? So the ephemera fair just runs four times a year. Yeah. Um, we do run a book fair right. at this, in the same venue. That's eleven times a year. And is that so? That's almost monthly then. And is that more like uh, first editions and rare, rare first editions? It is, yeah. and um, it, it's antiquarian, out of print, second hand books. Yeah. They do have some pulps and paperbacks there. Right. But we also have ephemera, maps, prints, uh, okay. manuscripts. Yeah. Um, so that's quite varied. And that's on a monthly basis. That's then. on a monthly. Yeah. Basis. And they're always here in the, the Bloomsbury Holiday Inn at yeah. Palm Street, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a great venue. I mean, I really, I it's really got like a nice it. Atmosphere, it's hasn't it's it? slightly yeah. upmarket. It's not yeah. like a little town hall or no. something. You know? I go to yeah. a lot of toy fairs and they're actually in um, uh, cattle markets, yeah. physical cattle yeah. markets. This is, is so much different and it, and it is nice. Well, you know? and I think the, 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 the lovely thing about having a central London fair is mm. the transport links are so good. Yeah. You know, so we're only like, what, two minutes, a minute walk from, from Great Russell. Street, Russell yeah, Street Station, great, yeah. buses, Kings Cross, Euston are just mm. down the road. So yeah. the transport links are really good. People come from all over the country and come here. Yeah. Um, you can eat and drink around here. All right, it's not cheap in London. No, but there's but lots of choice. But there's lots there? of choice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, um, oh, I found it fantastic. And I suppose on a personal note, you do all these book fairs and paperback fairs. Of family. Do you collect anything yourself? I don't, but my yeah. husband's a dealer. Ah, that's how it right, got started see, yeah. because my husband's yeah. a dealer. Yeah. Yeah. And years ago, there was a fair. We used to be over at the Royal National Hotel yeah, across those, the way. Yeah. And uh, one of the fairs, uh, the people that were running it didn't want to run it anymore, which was this fair actually, the Ephemera Fair. Yeah. And they said to my husband, Would you That's like to take it over? Start, yeah. So my husband said to me, Do you want to run it? That was about 22 years ago now. Wow. wow. And um, it started it's off very small. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So, so it's good, brilliant. yeah. So, and look, I'd like to say thank you to you because promoting on your channel was obviously paid off for this yeah, as well. Well, I, I, yeah thank yeah. you for that. My, yeah. I, my pleasure yeah, yeah I love doing it yeah you know? so it's been Keeps really the hobby good. active in that which is what it's all about and, yeah uh, just one you know we're seeing it's not just me who do YouTube there's lots of book youtubers nowadays mm -hmm. and um, we're all seeing a big surge and people getting into the hobby and youngsters especially yeah. coming in who are discovering it for the first time yeah but there's nowhere to buy it the, the, that's, that's the, the nice thing yeah. I mean look it is getting increasingly difficult mm -hmm. I am only running four of these a year yeah. these ephemera fairs because the hotel put the rent up so much oh, I couldn't really? afford to yeah. run them any, Blimey, any yeah. more frequently okay. than that yeah. so um, but nothing beats coming and physically seeing something and holding yeah. Yeah, the smell of it, it's you know, the feel of it. It's just great, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? No, absolutely you know. not. Well, long may they continue. Yeah. Thank you. Kim. I'm going to keep going as long yeah. as I can, so oh, long brilliant. as I can carry on paying the rent. That's we'll be fine. here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank great. You. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here with Morris, none other than the legendary proprietor of All You Need Is Books or Zardos Books. How are you, Morris? I'm okay. I mean, it's, it's been very good today, the book fair. Excellent, excellent. It's well attended. Well attended, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, um, <coughs> we can mention who actually caused the attendance almost. Well, yeah, well, I mean, myself and Steve, we've been really pushing it, and we just want to see the hobby as healthy yeah, as yeah. possible. Yeah. And, um, well, there was lots of people to buy, and everyone I've spoken to have had a great time, which is the 
the main thing, isn't yeah, it? You'll yeah, do, I mean, the book first existed since about 1990. We used to do it elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. And I was the organiser for 20 odd years. But now we've actually joined with the Ephemera Fair at uh, yeah. in Bloomsbury. And to be honest, it's great. Yeah, I mean, well, the, yeah. the two go hand in hand quite well. Don't oh, yeah, they? because yeah. there's lots of paperbacks and, and books. And, and I've actually found out artwork in the past. Right. There is some there today actually, but unfortunately not boot artwork. Uh, but not book related. But yeah, yeah but <laughs> otherwise I'd have been buying it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic, yeah. 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 I mean it is, there's such a great mix and there's, you brought pulps up this time haven't you? I brought a lot of pulps, I, mean, I did sell some western pulps, which is good. Yeah, um, western, yeah. Because I've got yeah. quite a few and then I've been really selling books very cheaply at a pound each. Yeah. Uh, because I've got thousands and thousands of books, many of probably About a hundred thousand Well, maybe? Well, yeah. certainly a hundred thousand books yeah. anyway. And uh, several thousand where I've got maybe duplicates, and so I just thought I'd take bring some today. Get, and yeah, yeah. it's been a feeding friend. That's one of the great things yeah. that you can come along with 20 quid and go away literally with a carrier bag full. Well, that's true. And I think that's such a great yeah, yeah. I mean, paperback a, collecting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great in that there'll be books that are expensive, really yeah. tough books to find. But you'll find expensive books, you'll find things with very good artwork, very good cover art. Yeah. And you'll find cheap stuff, and you'll find sleepers. You know, you'll find things that's that true. You know, people haven't realized. You know, it's, it's such a good book. Maybe, but there's, there's virtually everything's represented. something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you've got such a massive inventory. What's the best way for people watching? I know, you know historically I've done some warehouse visits, and uh, you know you just can't sort of take it all in when you go in. But if you wanted to browse, you've got a website. People can get. You've got a website. In? I mean, the website at the moment is probably the one to see. Is Zardos Books. Zardos um, Books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Zardosbooks.co.uk. Yeah. Uh, I've also got all you need books.co.uk, but the, the Zardos one's got all the stuff. On. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, not only that, it's possible to visit. I mean, you can visit the main warehouse where mm. I've got books with you know the usual sort of prices. And obviously, avoid postage and avoid Absolutely, Amazon fees yeah. and ABE fees, etc., etc. Yeah. We've all just opened the new office, which is very close to it, and everything's a pound. We've and that is books. really that is, fill your boots time. That it one, is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Today, I brought a few, and the people have been going mad. Yeah. yeah. Buying yeah. Those, so Absolutely. So there's thousands and thousands of boots. Well, there you go. Pound, yeah. So if someone wants to come and visit is it best just to drop you an email yeah it's, it's probably best email. i mean yeah. generally speaking now we've got some there between 10 and 4 weekdays okay yeah um, so most days then yeah that's at mill lane perfect. westbury uh ba13 okay me. yeah the post <laughs> um, uh, so there's usually somebody there 10 to 10 to 4 brilliant but probably if you come in a long way it's yeah to email and that would be make sure everything's going to be there yeah you yeah, could yeah. do do and both then if you want then, yeah. especially we can make sure we get you out for you know we can show Absolutely, you the right yeah, things yeah we can just generally browse you know no commitment so awesome. uh, that'd be zardoz z-a-r-d-o-z at blueyonder.co.uk just like that famous yeah. sean connery movie yeah brilliant thank you very much Mark. Yeah, great right, to see you, you again that's great yeah cheers Okay, so I'm here with Neil Pettigrew. Neil, um, you're the organiser of the show today. How do you think it's gone? Better than expected, I would say, definitely. Uh, it was absolutely heaving yeah. first thing this morning, and it carried on being heaving for several hours afterwards. So, absolutely, yeah. Uh, thanks to support from people like Jules and other people online, we, we seem to be reaching out to uh, a bigger audience, a bigger audience yeah. and uh, people who we wouldn't have been able to reach normally yeah. I mean I've always promoted it on Facebook yeah put flyers in bookshops um, done whatever I can but it's just hard, hard to reach people but yeah. YouTube is uh, it's, a, it's a way to get to the masses isn't it you know and from what I understand the dealers have had a great day you know they've had, they've been nice and busy cleared some stuff which is what it's all about and people are leaving happy you know they're having they're, they're here they're talking books um, you know, it's been just a great upbeat show yeah it's a weird vibe it's brilliant I absolutely love it yeah I mean if you go back a decade I, I was get, beginning to get the feeling that paperback collecting was a, a dying field yeah and even the last couple of paperback fairs that were held in 2011 and 2012 were not particularly well attended and there was a feeling that uh, it's, you know it's all over really but yeah we've proved today and last time that uh, yeah, it's, not, it's definitely not all over. we feel you know thanks to stuff like YouTube and, and there's some great websites as well but there's been a massive uptick in people collecting vintage paperbacks there's not a lot brand new really uh, capturing the imagination um, there hasn't been like a Game of Thrones for what 10 years so people are going to the old stuff now and you know this is 
they're discovering stuff for the new. Well, I, the first I hope time you're right. Wouldn't that be great if yeah. uh, it all goes back to you know the good old days where uh, people like old paper. Yeah. They go to book fairs. Uh, maybe we'll even see second-hand bookshops opening up instead well, of closing down. Yeah. It's funny. I went in, into a load with Dorset Bob yesterday. Uh, we went into six, and they were all busy. They all had customers in, so there is a market there for it. But you know, is it a sustainable business? It's tough out there on the high street, isn't it? So it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, um, for a long time, a lot of book collectors and book dealers and auction houses have kind of been a bit snooty about paperbacks. It's true. They kind yeah. of look down on them as worthless, and uh, yeah. they'll chuck hundred in a box and they'll be happy to get ten quid for it. But yeah. I think people are starting to wake up to the it fact now. That actually, some yeah. of these books are rather wonderful. Yeah. Um, and th I hope. It would be nice if the value started going up and more people started collecting them yeah. and they started to achieve some of the prestige that hardback books that's true. have achieved. Yeah, that's true. Now, I know there's been talk about why don't we do it a bit more often, but there is that very real argument that we need a bit of time for dealers to catch up and get new stock, you know? So that is a problem, isn't it? Just well, replenishing. Yeah, I mean, it's, I like to keep it a special event, you know, if you, say if you had it every month. Yeah. It wouldn't you, you, feel so special, would, would it? You would dilute the whole thing. You'd yeah. get fewer people attending each time. That is definitely true, yeah. And from the dealer's point of view, it would be a sort of diminishing return. Because yeah. you just have the same people coming. So once or most twice a year is ideal. About right. Because it, yeah. it is a niche. Yeah, it well, it, niche it keeps thing. it special then, doesn't it, actually? So that's that's a really good good way of looking at it, actually. Brilliant. Well, I've had a fantastic day. Everyone I spoke to has really enjoyed it. So but thanks again, Neil, for organising another great show. My pleasure. And... Uh, a hundred thanks to you for your support, My pleasure, mate. promoting it, <laughs> and how much do I owe you? <laughs> <laughs> Not a penny, honestly, I do it for free. Okay then, so what's your name, mate? Uh, Trevor Kennedy. Trevor, and, yeah, okay, and what are you here for? Phantasmagoria? Yes, I'm, I'm basically the editor of Phantasmagoria and our special edition series, yeah. where this is actually our latest special, which oh, is the wow. Hellraiser special. Um, it's very much a sort of tribute to, especially the first four films, but the series as a whole, and yeah. you know, there's stuff in there about, you know, Clay Parker as well, obviously, and, and stuff. Brilliant. So, yeah, so there's some, a lot of the, the original Original cast and crew are in there. Yeah. You know, Kim Newman. You see, there's a, a wonderful Graham Humphreys uh, front cover artwork. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Les Edwards um, there as well. Oh, fantastic. You know. So this one's just published. Yeah. Literally yes. yesterday was just it? published. Yes. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is the paperback version. There's a limited edition hardcover, signed hardcovers as well. Oh right. Um, which are available. So yeah. yeah. And what's the best way for people to get hold of this? Uh, well, through the Phantasmagoria website or yeah. on Amazon. Okay. But However, if they wanted to order some of the signed hardcovers, uh, the, the best way would be to go to the Phantasmagoria website. Oh, brilliant. Well, yeah, fantastic. So what I'll do, um, I've got that review copy, so I should do a proper, on my next pickups video, we'll have a proper look through that. Yes. It does look fantastic. So uh, thank, you. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, thank mate. Thank you. Great. Andrew, it's a packed show, but you've managed to get a few groovy books off Dorset. Bob, what have you got there today? Uh, I've always been after that, but I've never seen it, and thankfully I managed to. Um, Lovely new grab English it library, today. isn't it? Yeah. I have read that one before. I can't remember much about it, so I'm looking forward to awesome. Yeah. Refresh my memory. Yeah, that's that. a scarce edition, that one, isn't it? Uh, very nice. I remember. I remember that from when I was a youngster, but a different cover. So All right. Yeah. Give it a go. And uh, I've heard of the author. I've only read yeah, one of his. Yeah. Someone's mentioned these ones on on um, YouTube. Yeah, and, oh, well, if I didn't get it now, I'd always regret it. And that's the really nice edition of it, yeah, I think. It. It's Brilliant. Prices as well. Oh, thank you very and, uh, much. Nice thanks. meeting you. Yeah. Cheers, so I look mate. Forward to seeing you on YouTube. Hi, my name is Derek. And where are you from? Poland. Poland. So, have you come over especially for the show today? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, what have you what have you got there? You got a little bag of goodies that uh, I can see. I have a Oh, large and a rucksack full, yeah. yeah. I have a large pack of goodies. <laughs> All full of books, yeah. Uh, yes, and um, well, Bob was nice enough to find this uh, Carl Edward Wagner. Oh, uh, right. And, books. and these are from that fantastic collection you got, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. That was pretty special, that wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm, I'm really lucky I had a chance to, to uh, grab this. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, thanks for coming along today. It's been My brilliant. Pleasure. Good to see you.
So I'm here with my friend Kenny. Kenny is a fellow YouTuber. Hello, Kenny. Hi, pleased to meet you. And uh, Kenny, um, it's been an incredible show. You've got a big pile of books, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Absolutely. Um, but you know, you've started sharing your finds on YouTube now, and I've been watching. I've been dipping into your videos. Started to go through the backlist. I'm, I'm really. It's, we're on a very similar wavelength. We I are think. there. Yes, you know, with collect, what we collect yes. and that. Um, Absolutely. We've both got that collector's gene a little bit where we collect them by the numbers in some cases yes, right. not just the authors it's, it's fatal um, isn't it so they put a number on <laughs> <laughs> you should try penguins I'll tell you oh, um, nice. but um, it, what sort of series do you collect so if anyone who's not seen your channel right. um, what would they look up on YouTube well um, I collect door books mainly that's door what yeah okay that's brilliant yeah um, I also collect the so-called pan lozenge books which ah, a lot of people yeah. might not know about um, being you know ones with the grey the ob like the oblong yeah, oblong behind the yeah, yeah. Stephen, that's Steve Steve Andrews, the outlaw bookseller, actually put me onto that. He, he coined the phrase, didn't yeah, he? He's yeah, a, He's a one, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah. And Badger books, the old Badger books. <sighs> Lovely, yeah, which yeah. I also love. Yeah. I've got some great Badger stuff coming up on the channel. So oh, right, I've got an interview with Steve Holland, um, oh, okay. and I look through his new book as yes. well. Um, yeah. And uh, Shane Agnew's done a third guidebook as well. So it's for Badger collectors, it's been a good time, you know? Yeah, I mean, brilliant. I found a few nice cheap ones today, actually. That's good. Which, uh, yeah, it's a surprise, isn't it? Yeah. It's lovely when you come across them, though, because they're not out in the wild, are they? Oh, you don't see no. it. You've got to go either to eBay or a place like this. You never find that them anywhere. Is it. No, you're, no, you're dead right. But it's been a great fun fair, hasn't it? Yeah, really I mean, good. even even the ephemera, there's been a few, I've picked yeah. up a few bits in I there. I got a couple of bits, I got four you know? paperbacks yeah, in the ephemera. Quite cheap there. as well. Yeah, mine were on just a couple of quid each. Yeah. I thought that's the right. I got a few last time as well, so I'm really pleased. And I tell you what, I did buy in there were these little pockets for um, like bookmarks and stuff oh, like right, that. They got. Right. I've been looking for something like that for ages. Yeah, and that one store, she's got everything. Yeah. Every permutation you could yeah, want. So this is where you need to be. Absolutely, that sort yeah. Of stuff, uh, it's it's just heaven. I really enjoyed it. So I think she said the next one's going to be November, the next D Day. We can lead up to oh, that, I one, bear like, that one. Like, you know, I start yours. saving already. I think. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I haven't quite blown my uh, yeah, your budget yet. No, you have right? blown my what? But, it, um, it's easy to do, but yeah. So I bought um, I bought a proper little book bag there. Oh, a brilliant! I was yeah. determined to fill that, which I have. Which just, you've done it. It's well, up to the lid. So I'm going to cut down. I'm going to go in on your books now. Yeah. I'll, uh, might be easier for them if I turn them spine, spine up. What's in my Look at that, yeah, you've done well, haven't you? Yeah, you've done a, few, well. a few more in the bag as well, so... Uh, oh, no, that's lovely. Look at all those lovely doors. Yeah. Slave girl, a door, I know, I, I, yeah. I, I actually just been to Bob. Yeah. What have you got, Ken? Oh, we'll have a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some good ones there in there, yeah. Yeah, some nice badges. And, and a couple of badges as well. And those Avon Fantasy Readers are nice, one and two. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the best thing I bought today. Best thing? I've been trying to get this since forever. Oh, it's in the mile. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. First New Worlds. Very nice. Yeah, let's have a look at that one. Look at that. Very nice. Oh, er, early Ballard. Yeah, I'm yeah. pleased to see you, Steve. That was from Dorset Bob. Look at the copper. Look at it, it's mint. Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Actually, there was a guy right at the end just selling a few bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that I just stuck Bob's thing in there. I got my last one. I got the. Did you? Yeah. You know, I yeah. put on the video, I needed 156. I should get him really. Uh, chaps said I'll bring you one along today. Oh, well, I, like, I, I got, like got him, yeah. I like the magazine yeah. size ones. The magazine yeah. ones. Yeah. Nice. I like the combat. The combat ones are really nice, mate. Yeah. I love them. So, I mean, they're great. I mean, if I were to go. If I were to start collecting SF mm -hmm. from that print printed in that period, I would go for more than Brilliant. More than yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they are they are really I'm good, aren't they? You, see if there's anything else you, can take you got it. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Cheers. And uh, well, yeah, Stephen, we're Stephen, yes. Stephen Kenny. Yes. It's it's YouTube come to life, isn't it? Oh, guys, you know? we're, we're yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but some of the youngs are great, aren't they? I mean, I really like Matt. Oh and yeah. Matt yeah. At, uh, science fiction. I was saying, was it Jules? I, was, I think it was, might be John. I was from uh, Skyfire yeah, Scavenger. Scaven yeah. Scavenger. Um, we were saying that there's so many to watch these days. You know, yeah. 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 Watch you need an extra yeah. extra week, a yeah. extra week yeah. a week. Yeah. And then, then I can't do it. I can't keep up with them all. Did no. you feel the need to comment? Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. Each all week as well. Cool. Like, yeah. I'm trying to find my missus for comedy so much. <laughs> I got a, I got a whole day's worth to do. Thanks a lot, anyway, Steve. Anyway, nice yeah. to see you, Steve. Yeah. 
So I'm here with Ryan. We're here at the London Paperback Show. It's March 2024. Once again, it's absolutely heaving, isn't it? It's, it's, yes, it is. And the other, what's this? The Ephemera Fair. The Ephemera Fair. That's it. It's yeah. also uh, heaving as well. Really busy. It's been a fantastic show so far. Yeah. What have you managed to pick up? Um, I got Steve Holland's Badger books. Oh yeah, the Badger um, Trail. Down the Badger Trail. Yeah. A collection of uh, sort of bits and bobs of pulps. Yeah. And just random titles, science fiction. Fantastic. Mostly. Yeah. And uh, some vintage UK uh, sci-fi paperbacks as well. Just to add to the collection, our fan. So, as you probably know, viewers who may not know, Ryan did that fantastic book last year. It was last year, wasn't it? Reagan's and Rocket Ships. Yes. yes. Yeah, and still a fantastic book. I looked for it again recently. What are your future plans? Anything to do with that? Maybe it's well, we've sold out, so we're doing it's a the sellout. Reprints. Yeah. And okay. If we can afford to do so, we're going to add a few more pages because obviously okay. things have come out. Uh, the woodwork since then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there were a few corrections yeah. that we need to make. Okay. Yeah. Very people who know more about this than I did well, very helpfully emailed me to say that uh, you know we've got a few things wrong yeah. that we'd admitted certain credits so we're going all to right. okay. uh, include all that in the, in the, in new, the new edition, new edition. so yeah. I don't know maybe that will be out end of the year early next year yeah. oh brilliant I mean it's such a great book I still look through it it's just heaven it's no, just heaven I always you know I know you, it's predominantly like the golden age of science fiction up to about about 1960 would you say uh, the cut off was 1970 well, mainly because right. uh, yeah that 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 specific style, that very illustrative yeah. style, with like the made-up spaceships and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. the Ron Turner epitome yeah. style stops uh, probably in the sort of mid to late sixties. Yeah. And then you get a lot of the material that I put in at the end of the book, which is much more graphic design based, which I do have a soft spot for. Yeah. But then it, it dramatically changes, and then by the time you get into the early seventies, you have Chris Voss, like, Bruce Spellington. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That style takes over so I just yeah. thought that that was a, a good, good cut-off point, cut yeah. point and that that sort of 70s and post 70s um, all those artists have been very well covered already by yeah, true. Uh, that's Paper true. Tiger and other yeah, publishers so that's it, true. it didn't yeah. really make much sense to get into that Understood, it was yeah. it was that early and it's still a huge book isn't covered. it oh, yes. a yeah. massive, absolutely massive book yeah. fantastic now I've had a look at your fiction as well now oh, boy yeah. oh boy black locomotive I've been looking at this and thinking this is like nothing I've ever read before so it's like a mixture of fiction, science fiction, and like a graphic novel almost. It's like a graphic design, but how do you describe your your uh, last two books? Well, I, 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 on the flyleaf, I called them novel comma graphic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Torturous pun on graphic novel. But yeah. yeah. Now I, 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 I'm primarily a graphic designer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I always thought that. I mean, basically, comics are illustration plus the storytelling and the time dimension. Yeah. So I thought, what would graphic design plus the storytelling and time dimension be? Yeah. So you use all the um, language that graphic design has: different fonts, different layouts. Yeah. Uh, mimicking of historical periods, you know, what could you do with that as a storytelling medium? Yeah. So that's what those two books came out of. Fantastic. I mean, they do look really, really terrific. And the yes. reviews Have are you fantastic. Actually read them? Not yet, no, no. <laughs> but it, it's yeah. literally on my to be read pile, there's only one book in front of it now. So maybe this will edge it to the top of the pile then and then we'll start there. with Black Locomotive because it's shorter. That's uh, that's the one that's that is the one, yeah, that's the okay. next one. But I'm looking I have been looking at the reviews on it and they are amazing. Yes. Um, I mean they are really I very, good. I was very pleased yeah. with the reviews and I had no yeah. idea whether I mean there were a few people who complained that they couldn't turn it all into Times New Roman range oh, left okay. and they yeah, I bet. Yeah, well, but that's probably not the really audience part of the, part that would of the be fun, sympathetic to it in the first yeah. place uh, but know. I've just um, finished the, the, hopefully one of the penultimate edits on the new novel right. so that will okay. probably be out next year and a similar style and format I yes yeah. uh, it's okay. probably, probably up your street actually yeah. it's set in a, it, it's set in London and covers a hundred year period in a fictitious publishing house. Right. So I design all these fictitious magazines and book uh -huh. covers that go stretch back to a sort of fictional small press yeah. based on the dust press. Yeah. Uh, so turn of the last century. Oh wow. Well, well I w by, the next, by the next time we meet I would have read both of them anyway. I promise okay. you that. And uh, I'm going to show them in this video because they do look absolutely amazing but getting a bit noisy again but thanks very much for coming along Ryan. I, 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 also, I recommend Jules's YouTube um, videos. <laughs> if you
you like a very calming yeah. voice. Calming voice in a, in a just, time of... It's very relaxing. Chaos. Yeah, brilliant. Check that, that is exactly what we want. Thank you very much. No, Cheers, no Rob. Cheers, Rob. Brilliant, so here we are. It's towards the end of the day now, and I've finally been able to track down young Steve Jones here. So hi, Steve, how are you? I'm fine, it's been a wonderful day again. Brilliant, it's been, yeah, it's been a really great good. day. Yeah. I've bought a ton of stuff, I've sold a ton of stuff. Yeah. I'm not a dealer, so it all worked out fine. <laughs> um, I've seen you iron up a few of those lovely pulps from Bob. Yeah, but those, Bob and I went in on a deal at that auction ah, right, yeah, um, yeah. up north the other day, yeah. which as you know, from your video was a well I mean, yeah. it wasn't terrible but yeah. it was overpriced um, and the quality just wasn't there in most of the stuff yeah but there were certain things I was looking for and so Bob and I you know Dorset Bob and I got came to a deal and um, I'm happy he's happy yeah and I filled a few more slots now you know why am I buying pulp magazines <laughs> at my age I should just be stopping now but it's it's just lovely to have them isn't it yeah. well oh, most of them are British as well and yeah. I, I'm a I'm I'm a big fan now. I'm collecting British comics now yeah. from the 60s and 50s. I'm collecting British pulps, British digests, because I don't think that stuff is well documented. No, it's true. It's I mean, you know, I did a book called the, the Art of Pulp Horror a few years ago, yeah. and um, we had chap yeah, we had chapters in there about the British stuff. Yeah. And of course, what happens is that drives up the price. Yeah. So it's like a friend of mine yeah, it's true. said, you know, basically once you put something in a book Steve and we're now looking for it so it's, it's, now, it's going to cost you more next time oh, it's fatal isn't it now you published several books last year it was quite quite the stream what's planned for the year ahead last year was good because we did the Kong book we did the Weird Tales boys and we did the Robert Silverberg book all of which all you've great. mentioned on your channel yeah, really, really nice stuff. really nice the big book I've got coming out this year and that's in the autumn in America is I did the art of horror the art of horror movies and the art of pulp horror which is big coffee table books yeah. beautifully illustrated full color hard covers we're doing a book of videotape covers from the 70s uh -huh. 80s and 90s oh wow okay and all horror science fiction fantasy genre stuff um, it looks fabulous I mean yeah, the, it's all full right. color all the way through it's stuff uh, British stuff yeah. uh, uh, American stuff but also you know overseas stuff as well Italian and oh, French wow. it looks beautiful now, it will be publishing or applause Applause. Applause. Okay. You've done the other three books okay, in the yeah. series. Okay. Um, I'm also working on um, what I call legacy projects. Mm. I mean, basically, I used to do a lot of anthologies. I'm going back to anthologies at the end of this year. Yeah. But I realize I'm getting old. Jules, I'm really getting old oh. now. <laughs> and I. There's a bunch of books I wanted to do. So, like the Kong book. Yeah. It's yeah. a book that needed to be done. Uh, the, um, you know, those kind of books. Right there, I, you know, I've got a bunch of those books I've always right. wanted to do. Yeah. I'm not that old. I'm not that young anymore. So, um, I had a project I've been working on for 20 years. Yeah. Which is basically, however you want to look at it, the best of weird tales. All right, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And it's grown and it's grown and it's grown. I've never caught up with the project. It's now going to be three volumes in a slipcase. Right, wow. Signed by Ray Bradbury, Richard Matheson, Gayan Wilson, um, people who were originally in Weird Tales. I got these signature sheets done 20 years ago right, while right. they were still with us. And finally, and finally this time. book is either going to come out this year or next year. But okay. um, it's one of the things, it's a dream project. I've been working on it for yeah. years. It's going to look great. It's coming from PS Publishing again. Because so I love you know working with them. Job on it. They will yeah. do a lovely, oh, yeah. lovely job. Yeah. Money is no object when it comes to how you present it, how you do it. Um, there'll be trade editions, there'll be cheaper editions yeah, and whatever. Yeah. And now I'm going back into anthologies. So I've, it's, been a, it's been four or five years since I've done anthologies. So yeah. I've got about four or five anthologies I'm working on over the next few years. So, but there's also more legacy projects. I mean, there's yeah. more things I really want to do before I kick off this mortal coil. So yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, once again, brilliant to see you and to catch up. Oh, it's always fun to see you guys. Oh, um, I'm sorry your trip down was so bad. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, but all these things are stressed. I mean, Bob and I were talking at the auction, you know, up, yeah. up, up north, you know, a couple of days ago. It's it's just part of the, the story. It's all fun, all the fun of collecting, isn't it? All the fun of collecting, and, and, and God and knows, and you've done a marvellous job. I've got to say, you've done a marvellous job of promoting this fair. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. And as you said, I think a couple of weeks ago on your channel, um, this is the last time I'm selling. I actually yeah. am a collector. Yeah. 
and I, I inherited a collection. I've pretty much sold most of it to do something else, which we're doing um, uh, this year is the 100th anniversary of Basil Copper's birth. Right. Oh, so yeah. we're bringing out some of his books again, the Solar Ponds detective books, oh, yeah. the biography I did of him, that kind of stuff is coming out again mm. in new updated editions right. to honor him in his 100th okay. year, which yeah. is nice. Which, you know, and that's the kind of stuff I want to do. Mm. You know, it's and it, and yeah. some of the money I've made off of his books have gone to um, uh, literally putting on blue on DVD a film he made in the 1950s of the fall of the House of Usher, which has never been seen. Oh wow! Okay. Because so, he was a big <laughs> film collector. Yeah, yeah. So for the first time, when you get, when you get the the biography, you'll get the film in the in the slipcase, that kind oh, of thing. Brilliant. So you know, it's it's just fun, and yeah. it's fun seeing everybody, fun hanging yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. And God knows, I got some bargains here today. Yeah, I I am yeah. very happy with that's what I got today. Yeah, that's good. And I could have bought a lot more, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but always, it's great brilliant. fun, and yeah. I'm always around when people want to find me. So Excellent. you know, it's it's, it's cool. It's uh, cool. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thank Thrilled. you so much for all the Cheers. plugging of, of my stuff. Thank you. This is a lovely original Reginald Heed study of uh, a male model. Apparently this model was used on several book covers when he did actually have a male on the front. And uh, yeah, this is an original sketch and this is still available. So if you are interested in this, do get in contact with me through the channel and I'll put you in touch with the seller. Okay, so it's the day after the show and it's absolutely pouring with rain, as you might be able to hear. Now, dates for the next Bloomsbury Ephemera Fair are as follows, as you can see here. And I suspect that the next paperback show will be on Sunday, November the 24th. So obviously I'll confirm that a bit closer to the time, but put a little pencil date in your diary for that one. And if you are interested in any of the book related fairs, here they are on the back here. These are just the general book fairs, antiquarian, modern first editions. Great, great fair. Looking forward to going to one of these. And that's the dates for those for 2024. Okay then, so as is customary, I do like to do a little book haul. Now, uh, you may have seen in the video, I uh, did pick up that batch of Agatha Christie's. So I got these ones. These are the really, really nice uh, ones. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have got covers by uh, artist Tom Adams. I was particularly pleased to get an upgrade on that one because uh, that's the first time, 1967, it's the first time that that sort of psychedelic cover was actually used. Uh, there were some pans in there as well. So I'll, uh, I'll be checking my pans. And I did buy the whole lot. They were £45 for 24 Agatha Christie. So I was very, very pleased with that. Um, as I said, some of them I've got, some of them will be doubles. Um, and uh, I'm going to pass a few to my sister as well, because she's a huge Agatha Christie fan. There we are. I got him down to 45, so I didn't do bad. And off the same seller, I also got um, uh, an odd penguin. But these jackets are just uh, the great greatest i think they're just so good so good obviously i love all, all the agatha christie's but those tom adam ones are particularly nice and uh it's got a few more here so i think i did very very well nice early uh, fontana there for even under the sun not sure i've got that one i'm pretty sure i've got that but quite low grade with the girl eating the apple there's one of my favorite tom adams is there with the for the mirror cracked and uh, another favorite Lord Edgware dies with the uh, letter opener in the back of the skull. Absolute classic, that one. So that was the Agatha Christie's. And uh, I did get plenty of science fiction as well. So um, Bob was offered lots of books during the day. And um, he did get some, which he just offered straight on to me um, as a little thank you for helping him out on the day. So I picked up a few Penguin and Foursquare science fiction books. So uh, these were all ones that I didn't have already. And I'm trying to get all the Penguin science fiction. I've got a pretty good run of it, um, but it was uh, lovely to get some more. There's a few more odd Agatha Christie's as well from that same collection. And obviously um, I'll... Uh, give all these a proper clean and uh, brush and what have you um, on my next monthly unboxing video. So it'll be March pickups, which will be uh, coming at early April. Um, I said a bit more science fiction, really pleased to get these four square science fiction. I have on the whole really sort of come to love these and on the whole, they're pretty cheap as well. And there's a few exceptions, of course, but you know, there's some pretty good good uh, jackets on these and I'm pretty much uh, I'm really uh, enjoying collecting them. Stuff like this, I mean, it's great stuff. And it's uh, nice Aldis there, open prison. 
Um, also got a couple of compacts that I was really pleased about. Two more off the list. So I need about 10 now to finish the set. This was a huge, huge book of this. An Avon Giant Mystery Reader. Look at the size of it. And it's... Um, What's the catalogue number of this? G100. So whether that was the first one in the series, not sure. I've um, got a reprint of the first ever Penguin. It's in a dust wrapper, a sixpence one. It's uh, probably from about 1936, that one, because it shows the first 50 on the back. But Ariel is one of those books that I'd like to get multiple editions of, because I've got a few already. I'd like to get the different printings. Um, love me a bit of Fontana and some more Penguin science fiction particularly pleased to get the michael moorcock there that's one that you don't sort of see every day and uh, i'll just get these out of the way I had a absolutely cracking haul i've got to say uh, i did fill pretty much a whole box up but i was not alone i think lots of uh book fans did very well see some more penguin science fiction he said really pleased to get these um it's not like they turn up every day and they turn up in great shape they're just a bit dusty is also uh yeah, good stuff. There's that other um, compact that I got. First time I've seen that one. A little compilation there, Penguin Science Fiction. So very, very good. I might have that one already, but not to worry. This was good. I was really pleased to get this. This is uh, four square number eight. Look at that. Um, so I think I need one or two from the first ten now. Uh, Murder, Inc. A four square true crime. So never come across that one before. So I was really pleased to get that. Um, that was quite a nice Avon, 1950, for £3.50, which was good. Um, that was £2, just thought looked a pretty cool one. <laughs> also a little badger there, £2, but I haven't checked those. I thought for a couple of pounds I wasn't going to leave it behind. Pretty sure I haven't got it. Um, a digit there as well. Um, that was the odd penguin I got from the same dealer who had the uh, Agatha Christie's. So that was very good. Really pleased to finally get a copy of The Reluctant Legionnaire. I've actually got um, Taylor's cover rough for that framed up, and I didn't actually have the book, so really pleased to finally get the book. Um, this one was great. So this is the last copy of New Worlds that I needed, which is New Worlds number 156. So um, Phil Redhead, who is one of my channel viewers, um, on a recent video I did comment that New Worlds number 156 was the last one I needed and copies are on eBay at the moment they're like £35 and the reason why is because it contains the second ever published work by Terry Pratchett there the Night Dweller um, so it's, it's a collectible issue in its own right and um, I got that one for £20 instead of the 30 to 40 that it is usually is online so really, really pleased so thanks very much for that Phil um, another odd badger which I'm pretty sure I haven't got once again these are just Two pounds each, which is excellent stuff. Digit, a badger, another digit. And I got even got a pan that I needed. So, uh, wow, what a fantastic haul. Really, really pleased with that. Um, well, here we are. We're coming out of London. It's been an incredible day at the show, hasn't it? But tiring, I would think, Bob. Yeah, it's um, a lot of energy used up in a very short space of time, but great fun. Great to see so many people so many old faces and new ones yeah lots of new faces lots of people i'd never met before but said they'd watch the channel which was fantastic really uh really great to see all these people i think everyone under the sun even the most hardcore collectors who've got everything found something that they didn't have which was really good that's you know? right there was something for every, everyone wasn't yeah there? yeah it was brilliant Terrific. now personally have you had a good day sales wise yeah no yeah. very good yeah very good and um Great to have your help, Jules, and oh, also no worries, from yeah. the Outlaw Bookseller. Indeed, Sir yeah. Andrews. We did a bit of bookselling. Blessed, with, <laughs> blessed us with his presence. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's ten past four now. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get back to your place, uh, but we don't care because we've um, we got. We both found some stuff for ourselves, didn't we? Which is brilliant. We did, yeah. I always love that, yeah. yeah. I shall uh, show my haul uh, in good time. I don't know if I do on this video, yeah, maybe the next one. Um, but it's brilliant. So there's rumours, uh, well, we don't know for sure, but we think in November it's possibly the next Yeah. One. So it's been mooted that it was so busy today that I think the consensus is that there is enough interest for two a year rather than yeah. one a year. Because it's always been great. an annual event. Yeah, yeah. So that would be great, wouldn't it, you know? Um, 
So, well, brilliant. And thanks to you, Bob, for putting up with me the last couple of days. It's, it's been <laughs> what an adventure, eh? What an adventure. Adventure, I think, is the word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this morning at uh, five o'clock. <laughs> cool, yeah, I'll say. Absolutely. Uh, well, brilliant. Well, I hope you've... Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed the footage of the show. Um, it's been really, really great fun. I've had a great time. Um, thanks, as always, for watching. Uh, do hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And we'll both look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye. Bye.